The Life of Flashy Flash from One Punch Man. Flashy Flash is the S-Class rank 13 professional hero of the Hero Association. He is a former member of the Ninja Village's 44th graduation class, nicknamed The End. He is also one of the few people aware of Saitama's strength. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Flashy Flash. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Amagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Background. Flashy Flash was sold by his parents to the Ninja Village at the age of 5. Despite trying multiple times to escape the facility, he always failed and was severely punished each time. Flash claims that the numerous scars upon his body were a result of the punishments he received. Over the years, Flash was molded into a killing machine by the village due to the extremely brutal curriculum that the recruits were forced to partake in. Even at a very young age, Flash was an extremely determined individual to the point where he frequently pretended to be weak so that the instructors would punish him with the harshest training. During this time, Flash was placed in class 5 of the village which was known as the failing class. Coincidentally, Sonic was also placed in this same class and the two ninjas quickly developed a friendly relationship, which was strictly forbidden by the village. Flash mentioned that Sonic would frequently help him in times of trouble while never asking for anything in return. As a result of this friendship, Flash was able to recover the emotions he lost due to the several years of harsh training he endured within the village. At the age of 16, Flash already had been the number one strongest ninja in the village for a while thanks to his excellent abilities. Using the skills he developed over the years, he murdered every single person that had any connection to the village, with Sonic being the only one who avoided death due to being sick. However, unbeknownst to Sonic, his meal was actually poisoned by Flashy Flash to save Sonic for the bond they had together, and Flash knew that he would survive with only diarrhea thanks to a strong immune system from the harsh training. After graduating from the village, Flash decided to use his powers for justice and joined the recently established Hero Association. After leaving the village, Flash was hunted by multiple assassins and criminal masterminds, but he managed to dispatch all of them during his spare time. Some criminals and assassins Flash killed include Aborobozu, the king of organ traders, Harold, the drug kingpin, heart collector Burigura, phantom thief Chimagusa, the invincible pirate captain Devilstorm, and the higher-ups of the Coalition of Assassins. Alien Conqueror's Arc Flashy Flash appears at the S-Class Hero Association meeting. Although he was at the meeting, he remained quiet for a majority of it. When the Dark Matter Thieves attacked, he left the scene along with the other heroes. Super Fight Arc Flash appears in Eye City where he assists the gathering heroes prepared to fight against the Hundred Eyes Octopus. He uses his powerful speed to rush towards the monster and stabs one of its eyes. After that, he proceeds to slash all of the eyes until it goes berserk. As Flashy Flash begins to unleash his special technique to finish the monster for good, Tatsumaki arrives and lifts the monster into the air and crushes it into a giant ball. After the death of the monster, he and the other heroes are berated by her. However, he proceeds to berate her back but is stopped by the other heroes. Monster Association Arc The S-Class heroes, Flashy Flash, Tatsumaki, Child Emperor, Pig God, Kamikaze, Super Alloy Darkshine, Zombie Man, Puri Puri Prisoner, and Sekengar attend a meeting and they reassure Narinki that they will rescue his son. They each receive a transmitter that will show their location to each other. The meeting continues as they plan out their attack on the Monster Association. Flashy Flash gets into an argument with Tatsumaki before Sweet Mask barges into the meeting. When Sweet Mask demanded to take leadership over the S-Class heroes, Flashy Flash taunts him to try and take control with force. Before the argument could escalate further, King arrives and settles the situation. Flashy Flash is suitably impressed with King's overnight monster elimination at Z-City. When Sweet Mask backs down, Flashy Flash sighs. Flashy Flash leaves with various other heroes to attack the Monster Association. He arrives at the ghost town of Z-City with various others. He compliments Shadow Ring on her ninjutsu and asks where she learned them. Shadow Ring replies not from the same place as Flashy Flash as she skitters off. Flashy Flash mentions that it couldn't be his ninja village as his village didn't train any women. Flashy Flash kills various monsters from the initial monster attack. After dealing with the monsters on the surface, he heads underground into the Monster Association base alone. There, he dispatches several monsters before being confronted by Hellfire Flame and Gale Wind. The monsters compliment Flashy Flash on his speed before they do battle. 
During the fight, Flashy Flash destroys the corridor and Gale Wind rotates one of the blocks they were standing on in order for the battle to be in a more open area. As they fight, Gale Wind explains that they will eliminate all foes who are possibly a threat, and explains the purpose of going after Flashy Flash was because he viewed other ninjutsu masters as rather troubling. Flashy Flash sprints off at speeds neither monster could track, and he tells them to unleash their full power as monsters. Eventually, they have to reveal their monster forms, after realizing they're outclassed in their human forms. Flashy Flash's eyes widen in surprise at their increased speed, and is barely able to block both of their attacks. Round 2 of the battle between the three ninjas then begins. They continue battling and the two monsters are able to pressure Flashy Flash, managing to make him cough up blood, but once the hero became serious, he retaliates against them with a series of kicks, momentarily stunning them and then slices them both in half with Flashy Slash, one of his ultimate techniques, defeating them both so fast that neither of them could properly register what had just happened. Flashy Flash leaves the battlefield and arrives at a junction. He goes to consult his locator to see where he is, but finds that he lost it in the battle. Flashy Flash meets up with Saitama, who he mistakes for an enemy. He was very surprised when Saitama was able to dodge and counter his extremely quick attacks. He attacks Saitama again to test him, and Saitama dodges again. He recognizes Saitama as the B-class hero from the S-class meeting during the events of the Alien Conqueror arc. Flashy Flash speeds off intent on losing his tagalog, and instead is shocked to find that he's keeping up. Flashy Flash and Saitama run in circles in the Monster Association base, as neither has any sense of direction. Flashy Flash suggests interrogating a monster for directions. Saitama suggests they contact the other heroes instead, but Flashy Flash says he does not need assistance and that other heroes are capable. Eventually, they discover a monster and make it lead them to their leader, Orochi. They take a minecart and ride through the Monster Association headquarters. During the ride, the heroes battle various monsters. Flashy Flash is slightly impressed by Saitama's battle showing, but still considers him third rate. Traveling further through the Monster Association headquarters with Saitama and Monaco, they are attacked by Orochi, who is trying to absorb them in order to grow more powerful. Orochi is deemed too overwhelming, causing the trio to flee while also exchanging some blows of their own. Due to the fight between Tatsumaki and the fusion of Psychos and Orochi, the base is lifted out of the ground causing Flashy Flash to be buried in the rubble of the base because he had lost his communicator in his battle and thus was not protected by Tatsumaki like the rest of the heroes. After being found by Saitama and Monaco, Flash states that he is unable to force his way out because he fears he will break something if he moves incorrectly. As the battle above them escalates, the cave-in around them starts to tremor violently, threatening to crush Flashy Flash, who is still stuck up to his head in the rubble. To prevent this, Saitama decides to forego caution and begins rapidly removing rocks to save him, much to the ninja's concern. Their efforts to remove Flashy Flash's sword ultimately prove fruitless when Tatsumaki lifts up a chunk of the ground containing his sword, breaking it in half. He, Saitama, and Monaco look through the newly created hole in the wall but don't see anything, even after using Monaco's multiple eye modes. Suddenly, the cube Saitama unearthed speaks to the three of them, offering to grant them power if they're worthy, but to confiscate them if they're not. Suddenly, a man teleports into the cave, asking if they had touched the cube. Flashy Flash asks what would have happened if they had touched it, to which he answers that it's a transmitter of sort that allows for communication with God. Upon the disembodied voice identifying the man as Blast, Flashy Flash expresses shock at seeing the number one hero in the flesh, to which Blast correctly identifies him as the S-Class Rank 13 hero. He asks what they're doing so deep underground, but Flashy Flash replies with the same question, and wanting to test Blast, unleashes maximum speed Flashy Kicks. However, Blast easily dodges this attack and moves behind him, asking him to calm down. He then offers to take all of them up to the surface. Flashy Flash asks him what he's going to do, but Blast doesn't answer, simply asking them to send his regards to Sitch and Tatsumaki as he activates his ability. After being teleported to the surface along with Saitama and Monaco, Flashy Flash observes the situation around, wondering if the other heroes have all been defeated. He notices Gero, who has just regained his senses after fighting Bang. While Gero is wondering what has happened to his body, Flash surprise attacks him with a kick, although he misses. As he's surprised that his kick did not hit, Gero recognizes him as the S-Class Hero Rank 13 and chastises him for striking from behind. Flash then asks Gero if he's the Monster King, which the Hero Hunter declines and reveals his identity to him, surprising him. Suddenly, Platinum Sperm interrupts and attacks both Flashy Flash and Gero. Flashy Flash recovers almost instantly and expresses his relief upon Platinum Sperm showing up, stating that it saved him the trouble of looking for more monsters and claiming that he can now take the latter and Gero both at once. They begin their free-for-all battle, exchanging blows at incredible speed in the sky. 
Although he is able to hold his own initially, Flashy Flash is soon outmatched by them. He's in disbelief that in just one day, he has met four people who have surpassed his supposedly unmatched speed. Flowing into a rage, he charges at Platinum Sperm with his Flash Fist, attacking the monster with multiple punches. Despite having taken multiple hits from him, Platinum Sperm is relatively unharmed and manages to stop the ninja, catching his wrist and knocking him away. Flashy Flash is frustrated and switches his focus to Gero, attacking him with his flowing shadow feet. Unfortunately for him, the hero hunter simply deflects his kick away, much to his displeasure. Immediately at this moment, Platinum Sperm comes in and kicks him hard in the face, reminding him that he's full of openings and questioning what's wrong with his spirit. As he continues pummeling him, Platinum Sperm likens Flash to Darkshine, saying that once he's outclassed by someone in his specialty, he too, just like the other S-Class hero, abandons his duty and puts all of his effort into protecting his pride. Flashy Flash is finally defeated by the fusion monster who lands a punch on him so hard that it sends him skyrocketing towards the ground, causing serious injuries and knocking him out. They finally get to where the fight with Gero is going on. Along with Darkshine, his true speed and abilities were shown. He left his mark as perhaps one of the fastest characters in the series, but was ultimately defeated. During their attack on Gero, Zombie Man states that even the strength of Darkshine and the speed of Flashy Flash would not be enough. Ninja's Arc By the time the Hero Association is about to fall, Flash acknowledges Saitama's strength, having been among the few heroes who were still conscious during the conflict with Awakened Gero, whilst also feeling that Saitama needs a proper teacher in order to show him how to fully hone his strength. In order to do so, he visits Saitama at his apartment, but when Saitama opens the door, he immediately slams it shut before Flashy Flash could properly introduce himself. When King asks Saitama why he did so, Saitama said it's because he looked annoying. Flashy Flash, however, isn't ready to accept the no and orders Saitama to open the door, because otherwise he would break it open himself. Before he could do so, however, he's interrupted by Genos, who demands to know what Flashy Flash is doing in front of his master's apartment, though Flashy Flash tells him that it's none of his business. They start an argument which quickly escalates into a fight that is stopped by Saitama. Genos then asks Saitama if Flashy Flash is an acquaintance of his, to which Saitama replies with a halting yes. He then introduces Flashy Flash to Genos, but says his name wrong, calling him Forlocks in the face. Flashy Flash tells Saitama that that was just the nickname he gave to him earlier, and vows to change this attitude of his. When King tries to tell Saitama Flashy Flash's correct name, the ninja hero stops him as he wants Saitama to remember it himself, because otherwise he'll never learn. Genos then asks if he should eliminate him, but Saitama tells him not to, because he would only end up breaking stuff. Saitama then recalls that he was trapped underground with Flashy Flash earlier and wondered if he had saved him. Flashy Flash then corrects him and tells him that he broke his sword. Saitama asks Genos to grab some tape to repair Flashy Flash's sword, but the hero shrugs it off and tells Saitama to focus on recalling who he is. Saitama then tries really hard to remember Flashy Flash's name and is able to recall the first four letters, but then ends up spelling it wrong again, calling him Shoulder Blade Crush, much to Flash's annoyance. He then changes his mind about his sword getting repaired and asks Saitama if he'll repair it or if he would prefer to pay for it in cash. Saitama then starts to panic and yells at Genos to get the tape, who immediately heads out to buy some. Flashy Flash then asks King to leave as he wants to talk to Saitama in private. After King leaves, Flashy Flash tells Saitama his real hero name and asks him to become his disciple. As Saitama's abilities are already overflowing with potential but need proper instruction to truly make them shine, since he's not even using half of it in battle. Flashy Flash then wants to start the training immediately and tells Saitama to follow him, but as soon as he leaves the apartment, Saitama slams the door again. Flashy Flash, now at the edge of his patience, returns to Saitama's apartment and tells him to stop messing around since he hates stupid pranks. He then tells Saitama that the other S-Class heroes are useless and that the Hero Association needs heroes like him, Flashy Flash, who can take out monsters quickly and reliably. He also tells Saitama that he's still growing in terms of strength and that with the right training, he can become nearly as strong as him. Saitama, however, says he won't get along with Flashy Flash since he was always calling him by his hero name earlier. Flashy Flash then agrees to call Saitama by his actual name and offers him a deal. If Saitama can defeat Flash in a sparring match, Saitama wins, but if he loses, he has to become his disciple. Saitama agrees and they head out to one of Flash's training sites. Flashy Flash then tells Saitama that in order to win, he only needs to land one hit on him and that the time limit will be 30 minutes. In order to give Saitama a little advantage, he lays down all of his weapons. When the battle starts, however, Flash almost loses immediately when Saitama suddenly appears in front of him and almost grabs him, with Flash only barely being able to dodge the move. Flashy Flash then reminds himself that he needs to be more careful since Saitama has already fought toe-to-toe -to -toe with Gero. 
Praising Saitama for almost getting the better of him, he decides that he will not give him another chance to do so. Saitama easily repeats the approach, and Flash again barely dodges the attack. He then uses many of his ninjutsu techniques, evading and attacking Saitama, but doesn't manage to do any damage. Saitama asks him if he can keep it up for 30 minutes as he's sweating and wobbling already, although Flash corrects him mentally, declaring that it's simply cold sweat and exhilaration. He continues the fight, but frustrated at the lack of damage, lashes out with his ultimate hand-to-hand -hand technique, Flashy Fists. Chiding himself mentally for going all out like that, he apologizes to Saitama believing that he hurt him, only for the latter to retort that he's fine. Flash then decides to use his weapons to better simulate real combat, prompting Saitama to regret not having brought along a fly swatter or something similar. He and Saitama continue their combat, with Flash visibly losing his calmness and becoming increasingly nervous at the ease with which Saitama keeps up. Seizing an opportunity to use Flashy Slash, he finds his sword destroyed by Saitama's teeth. Despite using many other ninja weapons and techniques, Saitama is entirely unfazed. Flash is eventually driven into a corner to his own surprise as Saitama looms in front of him. As he muses over the fact that he doesn't have time to use forbidden techniques, he sees Saitama prepare a punch and visualizes death in front of him, as Genos had during his first training spar against Saitama. The training is then interrupted by Genos, who addresses Flash as an apprentice applicant and brings news of a monster attack caused by the mutated monster group called Internet Surfers at E-City, while a visibly disturbed, sweating and shaken Flash barely responds. Despite this, Flash comes along with Saitama and Genos to stop the threat in E-City. Once arriving at E-City, Flash and Sonic are both surprised to see each other again for the first time since the Ninja Village Massacre caused by Flash. While Genos and Flash kill all of the Internet Surfer members, Flash looks back towards Sonic and realizes he was aiming solely for Saitama, and was knocked out for the 14th time by one punch. Flash thought both Saitama and Sonic were always fated to clash against each other, yet Saitama prevails every time. Because Saitama's presence was enough to attract Sonic, even aside from Saitama's disciple Genos, Flash realizes that Sonic has become much stronger and more dangerous than before. Flashy and Sonic then plan to settle their score on who is the most dangerous current ninja in a forest. Finally convinced of Sonic's improvement, Flash is impressed by how strong his former friend has become, although Flash still holds the edge between the two. Unfortunately, their battle is interrupted by a group of pre-44th graduated seniors from Ninja Village called Heavenly Ninja Party, which includes the revived Gale Wind and Hellfire Flame, who plan to ambush Flash with dirty tactics. But Sonic, who had drawn Flash out for the group, turns on them and temporarily sides with Flash as he wants to finish him fairly, and the two ninjas take on their seniors. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.